Howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. I'm here with another unboxing video today and today I'm going to unbox the cheapest bass on Reverb. So I thought this might be kind of fun. I was looking on Reverb, you know, Reverb.com is a great site to pick up, um, you know, both used and new musical instruments, but particularly the used market. And I was like, hmm, what's the cheapest new bass you can find? And this Glary or Glary, I'm not sure how you say this, I think it's Glary. Glory? I don't know. Anyway, this uh, particular model is called the GP and it comes in four or five different colors. And um, these are about $89, like, uh, you know, 89 and change across the board. But uh, so this is brand new, $90 base, brand new. And uh, this is the condition <laughs> that it showed up in. It's been abused along the way. You can see it, it's uh, definitely took some pitfalls, but we'll make sure it's okay here. I'm gonna open this bad boy. So I'm gonna scoot back here to get a little more of the box in and uh, attempt to uh, get this here thing open. Okay, I think I've got the top and the bottom loose. So let's go ahead and uh, open her up. It looks like the styrofoam is pretty beat up as well. So let me see if I can get this. Uh, I think it's gonna come out in uh, in pieces, but let's see if the base survived. Okay, so despite the fact that the box was trashed, the base seems to be in one uh, piece. We'll undo that in just a second, but first there's some accessories in here too. So let's take a look at the accessories real quick. This appears to be a guitar strap, and it looks like there's a pick in there too. I'm not gonna take it out of the bag just yet. This looks like it's a standard quarter inch cable, and looks like there's a truss rod wrench in there too, if you can see that. So a hex wrench of some sort, actually two different hex wrenches, probably one for the bridge and one for the uh, truss rod, I would imagine. And then this appears to be a case. Let's take a look here. Yes, this appears to be a gig bag. And this gig bag uh, offers virtually no protection. If you look at that, there is no padding at all. I mean, it'll keep the dust off of it. This is not going to protect the instrument at all. But that said, um, it does give you a way to carry it, and for $90 for a brand new instrument, uh, you know, I, I don't think you can expect too much from the case. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get the instrument open. As I said before, these come in several different colors, and this is the yellow. Almost got it. Good golly. All right. Okay. And there she is. So, and the cat's just gonna get right into the picture there. So, starting at the headstock there, we see the logo, four keys. We flip it over on the back. The back of the neck does not appear to be finished. It appears to be like raw wood. Um, it almost feels like you could get a splinter from it, but um, that should be easy to rub some oil on or something, which I, I may do. Um, we've got a neck plate there. Uh, it looks like a four screw neck plate, standard. The body looks to be solid wood, or, you know, which looks to be made of wood. Um, we've got strap buttons, both ends. We've got a individually adjusting bridge. So the four saddle bridge there. We've got a volume and a tone and a jack and a split P style pickup and a pretty decent looking yellow finish. Of course, it's not in tune at all. The frets are all nice and tidy. There's no sharp frets. It's got the nice jumbo frets on there, which you want on a base. It's got the position markers. Um, the nut, the nuts may be a little higher than I'd like to see, but not bad. It actually looks like it's set up pretty decent too. I mean, a lot of these inexpensive, uh, you know, instruments, when you buy them, the setup is just atrocious and you've got to set them up before you can even, even play them. But just from looking, again, it's not tuned up yet, but just from looking at this, it looks like the setup's actually pretty good. Um, at least for the out, out of the box. So let me go ahead and get this baby tuned up and we'll take a closer look and do some sound samples. Okay, so I got the bass tuned up and um, as I was tuning it up, I noticed that the tuning keys are not super precision. I mean, they're, they're inexpensive tuning keys. They're probably on par with other cheap basses, but they aren't super precision. They tended to want to go over and then you'd have to go back down and this kind of you had to work it a little bit to get it in tune. Um, again, not unusual on inexpensive bases. The setup actually feels a bit low to me. I mean, just looks and just from me handling it right now, 
I would probably actually move the bridge up a little bit because it, the setup's actually kind of low and it's probably gonna get some rattles. I guess we'll find out in a second. We're probably gonna get some fret rattle because um, it's really, really low. Um, the way that they have the setup so low, there's not a whole lot of clearance with the pickup. So, um, you know, normally on a P bass, you put your hand right here by the pickup and that actually feels kind of weird on this bass because the pickup's so high. So I might kind of play it more back here um, that's minor, of course, but um, overall, though, it doesn't feel too bad. It's got a pretty nice feel to it. Um, the body is very light. Whatever wood this is made out of is very light, so it tends to be kind of headstock heavy. Um, again, kind of unusual on, a, on an inexpensive bass. So I went ahead and plugged it in. Let's go ahead and bring the volume up here. There we go. So we are hearing some fret rattle. That's not surprising, but it actually doesn't sound too bad. So um, let's give it a little walking bass line here, see what it sounds like. So not too bad, it's actually got a pretty decent sound. Um, like I said, I would probably bring that bridge up a little. Um, might help with some of that fret rattling. But overall, I mean, it really, for a $90 bass, it doesn't sound too bad, as is typically the rule. If I, I'm sure if I compared this $90 bass to a $900 bass, the $900 one is not 10 times as good as is, you know, typically the case. But um, let's try something else here. This is uh, one of my favorite bass lines. I just love it because it just rolls and you can just keep looping it over and over and over again. You might recognize it, but um, great tune. So there you have it. That was a quick unboxing and review of the Glary or Glary, however you say it, GP uh, precision style bass. Um, again, these are about 90 bucks on Reverb. This is the cheapest bass I could find on Reverb. And honestly, it's not really that bad. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, I wasn't expecting great things, but it's not that bad. Now, mine has a very low setup, as I mentioned before. I'm gonna guess that typically with these inexpensive instruments, if you go out there and you buy three of them, you might get one with a high setup, one with a low setup, or, you know, who knows. Um, typically, it's just kind of inconsistent with the uh, lower priced instruments. But, you know, I kind of, you know, part of me wants to take the neck off of here, give it like a, um, you know, give it like some Danish oil and kind of put a finish on the back of the neck you know, possibly even upgrade those tuners and do a setup on it. And I'll bet it would hang with a lot of the $200 and $300 bases on the market, you know, just, just from my initial impressions anyway. Maybe that'll be a future video. Um, so by the way, this was not sent to me for free or anything like that. Um, I went ahead and purchased this with my own money and that's probably gonna be my model for most of my reviews going forward. I know I have had a couple instruments sent to me in the past that I've reviewed and I'm not just not sure how I feel about that. Um, so I think in the future, I'll probably buy them, review them, and then possibly turn around and sell them, um, you know, or, or what have you, maybe give them away to my subscribers or whatnot. But anyway, if guys, if you like what I do on this channel, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. This channel is not just about musical instrument reviews, but music in general, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Okay, folks, so it's the next morning, and I wanted to do just a quick addendum uh, to this video real quick. So first of all, I wanted to show the bass in the case because I had mentioned that, you know, that the case wasn't uh, all that padded, but I didn't really show how it fits. It does actually fit uh, pretty well. Now again, this provides almost no protection, so it will protect against like dust and scratches, but it's not going to protect against any sort of actual abuse of the instrument. So if you, if your primary place to play this is at home, then this might be a, a good, you know, a good bag for that. But if you plan on taking it out, if you're going to play in a band or even take it to lessons or something, you probably want to invest in a better case. 
Now that said, also, you know, this video, I wanted to make it a, you know, straight out of the box, how does this thing play, cheapest bass on reverb, and so that's what I did. But um, with any inexpensive instrument, you typically need to set it up and you it plays a lot better. So this morning, I went ahead and did a very quick setup on this, and all I did was on these bridge saddles here, I raised them maybe about, uh, maybe about a half a turn, two thirds of a turn across. And then on the uh, truss rod here, I loosened it maybe quarter to a half a turn. And then I brought the pickup down, the pickup screws down maybe like two turns each. Um, so just very, very minor tweaks. And boy, does this thing play better. It's like night and day. It plays so much better. And it sounds better too, because it isn't as rattly um, now that there's a little neck relief. I mean, having that neck so tight is what was causing a lot of that fret rattle. Um, so, you know, it, it actually just a few little tweaks. So I would say with any inexpensive instrument, you really should set it up. Now, if you know how to set up a bass, you're just gonna do that anyway. If you don't, you can go ahead and do a search for how to set up a bass, and there are some really good tutorials out there that uh, will tell you how to do it. And if you're just not comfortable with that sort of thing at all, you can take it to like a, any sort of guitar store, even a guitar center, anything like that, and they'll typically do a setup on any instrument for about $30 or so. So, you know, you could go pay somebody to do it, and, but uh, it's definitely worth it.